In a major boost to India's zero carbon mission, the World Bank has sanctioned a $1.5 billion loan to finance the country's development of low carbon energy. In a press statement, the organization said that the financing is aimed at helping India in scaling up renewable energy, developing green hydrogen and stimulating climate finance for low carbon energy investments. India intends to achieve the net zero goal by 2070. World Bank's program is expected to aid the implementation of the National Green Hydrogen Mission. To discuss the contours of the program, we're now joined by Auguste Tano Kwame, World Bank Country Director for India. Uh, Mr. Kwame, thank you very much for joining us. Give us a sense of the contours, the pillars of this $1.5 billion funding program for India's renewable energy transition. Thank you very much. As you said, India is very committed to uh, achieving net zero by 2070. And this program uh, that we just approved yesterday for 1.5 billion uh, called Low Carbon uh, Development uh, Policy Operation is to support India's uh, transition to uh, its own net zero goal. And to do that, the operation ha has three pillars. Uh, the first pillar is to support uh, green hydrogen development, which was um, uh, uh, well established in the National Hyd Green Hydrogen Mission launched earlier this year. Uh, to do that under the first pillar, the operation will be supporting uh, how government is uh, encouraging demand for green hydrogen, as well as supporting production of green hydrogen by reducing costs and closing viability gaps funding. The second pillar of the operation is to support renewable energy. Uh, we all know that green hydrogen requires renewable energy, and therefore the second pillar will also boost uh, demand and supply for renewable energy, such as solar, for example, uh, where India has invested a lot and has made a lot of progress, uh, but additional production for renewable energy is needed to support the green hydrogen mission. The third pillar is we all know that it's important to bring in private sector and green finance to support production, production of renewable energy and green hydrogen. So the third pillar of the operation will do exactly that. It will, launch, it will help launch the uh, carbon market as well as uh, boosting private sector investment into renewable energy. Right. Uh, India had announced a $2.3 billion program for green hydrogen and electrolyzer manufacturing in the month of January. How much of this $1.5 billion funding program that you have now announced will go towards India's green hydrogen mission directly in the form of incentives? Or is the latest announcement that you're talking about over and above what the Indian and government has already announced? The operation is a development policy uh, loan, which, is, which may, means that it supports policies and regulations. It does not provide uh, direct financing for NG, a specific uh, expenditure items. We providing 1.5 billion to support the government's broader um, green hydrogen mission, but not just that. As you uh, heard me mention earlier, the operation will also support the uh, scaling up of renewable energy, uh, other than green hydrogen, as well as boosting uh, green finance and um, and private sector investment into uh, renewable energy, as well as green hydrogen. So, uh, whilst we don't make a direct link between. Uh, the financing of the operation and the cost of the National Green Hydrogen Mission. We're very happy that the 1.5 billion operation will support the broader development of green hydrogen, renewable energy and uh, green finance in India. Right. Today, the government has formally rolled out schemes for incentivizing manufacturing of green hydrogen and electrolyzers. How do you think these incentives that the government has come out with compare to incentives from other countries? Yeah, we have looked at how countries are uh, developing green hydrogen. You know green hydrogen is a very new uh, technology, but a number of countries are looking into it uh, in developed countries as well as in developing countries. And we're very proud at the World Bank uh, for having launched what we call Hydrogen for Development Initiative at COP27. And this gives us a framework of how we see uh, green hydrogen uh, technology being developed especially in developing country context. And in fact, the day before the board approved the 1.5 billion uh, low carbon energy uh, program for India, the board, our board also approved a similar operation for Chile. And the idea behind these operations is 
that there will be a sufficient boost uh, or support for renewable energy so that green hydrogen can tap into the renewable energy supply without uh, affecting countries' ability to uh, meet the, the, the NDCs, whereby they also want to, appro to improve uh, renewable energy production for direct electricity consumption. Mm -hmm. The second thing uh, we, where we think the government mission is consistent with where we, we see uh, the, the technology going is the importance of supporting demand. Uh, because if demand is not uh, strong enough, investors will have doubt as to whether uh, their production will be taken up, uh, whether there will be other, some, some off-take risks. And the third thing is um, to provide viability gap funding because it's a new technology and there are uh, some hesitations or uncertainty on the part of investors. So the, the government incentive scheme that we've seen is very consistent with what we see as uh, the way to, uh, to go to boost this new technology, especially in developing countries. Right. Uh, your statement also speaks about this $1.5 billion funding be, being the first step of two envisaged operations. What will be the next announcement and when will the next step towards India's energy transition be made by the World Bank? We hope to have a long-term engagement with the government of India uh, on renewable energy and, uh, and green hydrogen in particular. Green hydrogen is a new technology. It's just being launched uh, in many countries, including India. Uh, for us, we see this operation as the first in a series of uh, uh, programs and projects uh, uh, to support the, the government of India's agenda. Uh, in, in the specific case of the operation that we approved uh, yesterday, there will be a second phase. We don't know when the exact timing of the second phase will be. It will be determined by the preferences of the government of India and, and the World Bank uh, jointly. But we do hope that this operation is not uh, a one-off uh, engagement. We hope it will be a long-term engagement between the World Bank and India. Right. Uh, the World Bank has also been working on a global alliance on green hydrogen. And... Uh, they have been very closely coordinating and speaking to the Indian government about this. Could you give us a sense of what will be India's role in this alliance and what will be this alliance aimed towards? Well, thank you. Uh, the, the, the first, first of all, let me uh, say that India is part of this alliance. And in fact, after launching the, the, uh, the, the initiative uh, at COP27, uh, we have had uh, our first and only meeting so far of the Hydrogen for Development Initiative, and that meeting took place in India. So it shows that India is in the, in the lead in, in, in making this Hydrogen for Development uh, a, a very useful uh, initiative for, for members. And the, the objective of the, the, the Hydrogen for Development Initiative is, is first to facilitate knowledge exchange uh, between uh, countries on the technology and, and the innovation, and we hope that India will play a role in sharing its own experience with other countries that will come later on uh, into the green hydrogen uh, uh, industry or, or movement. Uh, the second thing that the, green hyd the Hydrogen for Development Initiative aim to do is to help mobilize financing uh, for green hydrogen in, in, in uh, members of the, the, the initiative. And, and we've done just that with uh, the, the World Bank on financing and supported by also um, you know, other uh, sources of funding, we hope that, uh, that the alliance will be delivering for, for India as well as uh, for other member countries. So uh, India has been a very active member of the Hydrogen for Development, and we, we appreciate India's contribution so far. Right. Uh, what are some of the steps that India needs to take in order to encourage companies to switch to using green hydrogen manufacturing? Uh, do we need certain mandates? How do you think India will benefit with greater use of green hydrogen in manufacturing, and which are the sectors uh, where you see an implementation of the scheme in the near future? Well, first of all, it's very important to, um, to recognize that uh, the development of green hydrogen will be driven by costs. And, um, you know, as we had seen in India for um, the solar uh, energy, when costs come down, the private sector get into adopting the technology. When uncertainties are removed, the private sector get uh, uh, interested in adopting the technology. So what the program is aiming to do here is to provide initial uh, support for reduce, reducing 
the viability gaps funding, therefore some element of subsidy to help reduce cost. Secondly, encouraging demand so that with demand there will be greater supply and, and with that the cost will also come down. And there will be also some discovery of technology so there will be continuous learning uh, through research and development which the National uh, Green Hydrogen Mission will also support. And, and with this combination, uh, the private sector will increasingly uh, adopt the industry. Now, I should also mention that financing is also a, a very important part. So uh, the, the third pillar of the operation, which will uh, help uh, mobilize private financing, will also help the private sector uh, adopt the, the, the technology on the production side. On the usage side, uh, the private sector will also, uh, in industries and manufacturing, will be driven, driven by, by prices. If the price of green hydrogen is competitive, they will adopt it, and we think that they might even adopt it without additional uh, mandate. So, you know, we need to watch how the technology goes and how the prices uh, and costs evolve, and then see whether there are additional needs for actions to uh, stimulate demand or supply. Right. Uh uh, Mr. Auguste Tanukuwame, thank you so much for joining us, telling us about uh, the $1.5 billion funding program that the World Bank has launched for India's renewable energy transition and the importance of the green hydrogen mission as well. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.